thank you for joining me for the first Executive Wellness Recharge. This is your opportunity to tune in to your body, mind, body, and soul for some relaxation and visualization and to create a pathway to manifest your goals for 2023 and beyond. The material that I'm gonna to cover today is evidence-based and we're gonna have a good time learning and unraveling our deepest desires and making our dreams come true today. So during this wellness recharge, it's your opportunity to create your goals for 2023 and beyond using mindfulness, leadership development, and other transformative practices. As you may know, neuroplasticity is a powerful thing. A lot of times we exercise our bodies, but we can exercise our minds in the same way. And it only takes about 10 minutes a day to train your mind to think in a way that supports your growth and vitality. And that's what I'm gonna teach you to do today. So some of the challenges that we have that are calling for this new way of thinking and living in 2023 and beyond are a no, chronic stress is at an all time high. And it's reported as the number one challenge in the workplace. You see, chronic stress may lead to heart disease and high blood pressure and other ser serious illnesses. And according to neurologist, Dr. Joe Dispenza, chronic stress can be reversed. So that's the good news for you. Stress can lead to unhealthy habits coping mechanisms such as overeating, overthinking, anxiety, and overwhelm. So it's an endeavor for healthy habits that is well worthwhile. Some of the causes of stress are stressful environment, microaggression, work-life imbalance. And we're gonna go over how to integrate work and life in a meaningful way. Sometimes you have difficulty adapting to new leadership roles. And according to the Gallup poll, only 15% of people are happy with their jobs. And a lot of times people don't know that they can change that. Another reason why there's such a chronic level of stress right now is because there's a deep disconnection. A deep disconnection of people to their selves. Like we don't even feel our bodies. If we have pain in our bodies, we numb it down with Tylenol or we numb it by listening to social media or television. Uh, we're not feeling a connection to who we are. And if we have pain, we may run to another outside source to find out what's ailing us before we even tune in to ourselves and reconnect and understand. So it's very important to be mindful of yourself and what you are feeling. A connection to your spirit, the creator and uh, whatever practice you are in tune with is fundamental. A connection to nature is something that we have in this century really gotten out of tune with. A connection to nature being grounding, putting your feet on the soil or the sand, that has been known to actually reduce inflammation from the body, just connecting for only 10 minutes or less. And they studied, they did a scan of people's bodies and they were able to see that the inflammation was reduced. And I am a witness to this as well, because once I found out about the practice of grounding or earthing, I started doing that. And if I had a little back pain or some tension, 
I noticed that I immediately started to feel a lot better after standing in the soil. There's a documentary called Earthing that's pretty interesting. It's by, I believe he was an engineer who did a study because he stumbled on this uh, by accident when he realized that uh, he was able to sleep a lot better after he started grounding. Another way to tap into nature is definitely uh, understanding when, when it's sunny to take a walk outside uh, to observe the sun and then the stars at night. We're all connected and this is a special time of year in the summer when uh, it's warm and you're able to increase your vitamin D uh, by being outside. And reconnecting to your loved ones is very important. Sometimes we see even the ones we love as outside of ourselves. The problems that they're having will point it as their problems. But in all actuality, when others that we love are having problems, we are having problems too. So we are connected. And today during this presentation, I will talk to you about ways to connect to yourself and your loved ones on a deeper level so that it creates less stress and tension for you because you're no longer feeling this sense of separation uh, and disconnection. And then a connection to the broader community. With COVID and the pandemic, uh, we've become even more disconnected and we've also become more disconnected due to social media and other things that we use as a substitute for a deeper bond. And the beauty of mindfulness is it teaches you to open yourself up and listen and be intuitive to the thoughts, to the things that you hear coming up for you without judgment and without as much anxiety as, as we're accustomed to. So today, during this executive wellness recharge, we're going to renew, recharge, and reclaim our wellness. And like I said, the goal is for us to stop chronic stress. A little stress is normal, but when it becomes chronic stress, it is detrimental to our overall health. And wouldn't it be transformative if we learn to alchemize the stress that we feel and use it in order to become stronger and better and understand the challenges that we have faced are lessons that we can use to go on instead of using these challenges to be stuck and to feel as if you're not in a place where you wanna be use them to propel you forward. And many people have done that, but there's two approaches. Sometimes you can get stuck in rumination about the past and feeling sad about that and fearful to go forward, or you can look at it in a different way. Look at it as a learning lesson to go forward and be more transformative in the future. Mindful communication supports you in that. Mindful communication is a sense of deeply being self-aware and present in the current moment on purpose without judgment. And mindful meditation supports you in that. We'll also explore personal development today. I administer something called the Leadership Leverage Disc Assessment, and this supports you even further in your transformation because it makes you aware of your personality and behavioral style. And each, there are four key personality and behavioral styles. So each of them likes to be communicated to in a different way. 
And this will help you understand that if you're communicating with someone in a way that you like to be talked to, then it may be less effective. So it's good to know who you are and know how to communicate with others. And this is a really powerful tool in leadership development that I offer as part of this um, executive wellness recharge. So uh, we wanna manifest and attract our desires, align with our passion, power, and purpose. One of the critical ways that that can be done is through joyful anticipation versus anxious apprehension. When you are anxious about your goals, you are repelling your goals and they're a lot less likely to be achieved because you're worried and stressed that they won't happen. But if you find joy in your destination, you'll be more likely to go forth. So I encourage you to celebrate your wins, things that you have achieved thus far to let you know that you have what it takes to go the rest of the way. And whatever goals you set today, because we are gonna set our goals and intentions, make sure that you set them with joy and not stressed. One example that I have is um, one of my clients that I'm working with, um, they work in, in social work and we are coming up with ways to reframe the story. So oftentimes they would wake up and say, oh, today's gonna be a stressful day. And, um, my clients are going to be, you know, bombarding me today and people are going to call in sick. And so immediately that's setting yourself up to have anxiety about your day and what's going to happen. Instead, I encourage them to practice meditation before they go in and practice visualization. Visualize it being a good day. Visualize yourself making an impact. And then you'll feel much more relaxed. And you'll also notice good things when they're happening. We talk deeper about joy as the seat of creation and how anxiety repels creation. And mindfulness for meditation. For, um, manifestation. Water the seeds and not the weeds. Oftentimes there is a propensity to either chase something in the future or worry about what's currently happening. And unfortunately that's not a way to live because it sets us up where we're never truly in a state of joy. And there's so many good things that we can water. So that comes from gratitude. And I talk about that in my book, how before you get up in the morning, think about the things that you're grateful for, because that will be your point of reference and your focus. If you start out thinking about all the things that are painful and sad first thing in the morning, then those things will multiply. Our thoughts and our words are so powerful. And that's why mindfulness and meditation and visualization help because over time, it not only brings awareness to what you're thinking, but it allows you to transform your own thoughts and direct your thoughts and the energy of your thoughts to what you desire versus what you do not, do not desire. So how do we get to more wins for our family and how does it feel? What are some of the gaps? We'll look at those, we'll examine those today. I encourage you to look at it 
from a perspective of examination, allow yourself grace and don't minimize your experiences, your past experiences. But like I said, we can use those as learning to go forward in the future. And if you need to work with a coach, a coach is designed to offer active listening, deep listening, and probing questions to support you in getting to your transformation, to go from drain to reclaim. So today we wanna discover what is your passion, power, and purpose? Because for each person it's different. And each person knows what that is, but they may have buried it. They may have silenced their voice. And it just takes time to rekindle that passion and find out what it is that's calling you. And choose your story. A lot of times we repeat the same story over and over again. And if that story is limiting, a limiting belief that won't allow you to move forward, then it becomes more of an excuse. It becomes like, why are you telling the same story over and over again? Is it to support yourself in staying where you are? If it is, then create a new story. Create a story that supports your transformation. Tell yourself that you're strong and brave and capable of moving forward, and then you will. Become the change that you want to see in the world. You see, there are a lot of challenges in the world. And if we focus on just trying to change the world, then we can lose ourselves in that because it starts from the inside out. And it also starts from knowing that you can break out of the status quo. You don't have to be unhappy if you don't want to be. Foster your intention and awareness. So now let's get to the activities where we're gonna manifest our goals with mindful leadership and communicate mindfully. As we said, mindfulness is being fully present and aware in the moment with focus and without judgment to reduce stress. It improves productivity. It improves your well-being. The elements of mindfulness, namely awareness and non-judgmental acceptance are regarded as antidotes against common forms of psychological distress, such as rumination, anxiety, worry, fear, anger, and more. Let me tell you a little bit about myself and why I chose to practice mindfulness and become an executive wellness coach. I am a certified life coach, organizational consultant, and mindfulness trainer. I'm also a women's wellness advocate. I practice as a public affairs executive for over 20 years, and I have a master's degree in business administration. I became an executive wellness coach after experiencing challenges with my wellness. And this is where I talk about make your challenges a ladder for success because one of the repetitive challenges that I noticed was um, challenges um, with, I would say my, the first challenge that I noticed that really caused me to want to change and transform was um, I had several uh, pregnancy losses, second trimester pregnancy losses. And that at that time, after that, I changed my diet. I became a vegetarian. Um, 
And that's when I started learning more about mindfulness. I read uh, the book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. It talked about the pain body and how people experience things in the current moment based on past pain and trauma. So the interesting thing about that is you can reflect on your day if you're acting out of the pain body, something that is not a true reflection of the current experience, but something that has triggered you. And so now I'm diving deeper into subconscious reprogramming and learning that we have both the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. And the subconscious mind is not bad. It can be taught and programmed, but we have to be the captain of our ship and not allow the programming that we had starting from an early age. Um, and even they say you may have ancestral programming that you have to consider. Don't uh, allow that to cause you to be stuck. So something such as, you know, a story that you might have that can be shaping your life over and over again to be stuck in a loop, the same cycle that can be broken. You can program your subconscious mind. And now I understand what they meant when they used to say we only use about 10% of our brain because we have something called neuroplasticity. So if we practice meditation and visualization and become aware of our subconscious thinking and affirmations, then we're training our brain, just like you train your body when you're on a treadmill. And there's a way to gain heart and mind coherence. So I tell that story just to kind of let you know where it started for me, but I had other experiences along my journey that really deepened my passion to become an executive wellness coach. And the most recent thing that I did uh, when I became a wound wellness advocate uh, was when I realized that I, in midlife, I had fibroids and I was gonna have surgery, but I somehow I stumbled upon a podcast where there was a lady, uh, she's a doctor, a naturopath doctor, and she was talking about how you can release fibroids naturally. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And she had a certification program and some tea and different things that you can do in order to uh, release fibroids naturally. So I went through her program and that supported me in being able to release fibroids. And also I realized that it wasn't just a physical thing with the um, the tea, you can just take the tea, but the, the fact that I did the certification that allowed me to understand the deep connection between myself, the nature and the environment, the community and everything and how the woman's womb is an energy center of her, her body. So if you hold stress in your body, you could be likely to hold it in that area and mindfulness meditation helps you to release stress and pain from that area of your body and all throughout your body. It's just a um, the same blood that flows through your body, supports your heart and everything. So that is um, that was one of the foundational moments in my life when I went through that experience. It releasing fibroids was about a for me it was about a four month journey. And I because we learn to circle with other women, you learn what the experiences are that you will notice and you find out that it's whether it's normal or not. And everyone's journey is different. So if you're at a stage when uh, releasing fibroids with this formula 
doesn't work, then it's okay. It's okay. Um, but just know that connection, a deep connection with your body, uh, mind, body, and soul, and the women circling does support you in some way. So the la latest um, thing that really deeply drives me as an executive wellness coach is uh, one day I was heading to work, which would have been a typical day. And I grabbed my keys off the counter to head to the door. And all of a sudden my heart started beeping, beating, pounding so fast that my whole body was rocking. And instead of ending up at work, I ended up in an ambulance with EMTs holding up their fingers, asking me how many I saw in a wave of questions to keep me from blacking out. And the next thing I knew, I felt patches being put in, on my chest and they said that my respiration was low and my heart beat was beating uh, over 221 beats per minute. And then they put the oxygen mask on my face and it felt and tasted like relief at that moment for only a few minutes. <laughs> and then I got to the hospital and doctors were talking in rush voices. And uh, this was, this happened more than once, but in the, the scariest time was when I was pregnant <laughs> with my daughter when it happened. I shouldn't laugh, but that's kind of a, a um, I guess the stress response. And my my coworker, she actually took me to the hospital. She drove me in my car and I was in a wheelchair. She put me in a wheelchair and then she was like, do you want me to take you up? And I was just trying to be cool. Like, no, I don't need you to take me up. So I jumped in the elevator. And by the time I got up to the top of the elevator, I was about to pass out. Um, and the nurse, I came and they got me to the bed and, you know, they were like, they finally told me that I would have to have a shot of adenosine to stop my heart from beating and then start it back at a normal pace. Um, and so that moment was one of the defining moments for me and making me want to focus on wellness. and. Uh, that became something that I did regularly and talked to friends and family about it. I was just so passionate about addressing my own wellness needs and helping others. And then I became uh, an executive wellness coach and a mindfulness trainer. So that is part of my, my story. And I use that story as a ladder to success, not a ladder to failure, because I could have said, you know, this is draining me and making me tired and, you know, been stuck with all the medications and different things like that. But I was able to um, find ways to support myself in healing and transformation by going through the women's wellness uh, program. So now I'm going to walk you through one of the supportive mindfulness meditation uh, practices that helps to um, support your wellness. So put your right hand on your chest and your left hand on your belly. We're gonna practice something called diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale, expand the belly like a balloon. I am breathing in the moment. I am this moment. I am breathing in the moment. I am this moment. Breathe deeply and hold. 
As you exhale, let go of any worry. Breathing in the moment. Inhale, expand your belly like a balloon. Exhale, breathing out the moment. Inhale, breathing in the moment. I am this moment. Exhale, I am in this moment. Teaching mindfulness meditation is a foundational way in which I support my clients. The following breathing meditation is a guide to your practice. So make sure you're in a comfortable position and tune in to your breathing for a few minutes. Feel the lifting and falling of your belly. Pay close attention to your lower stomach and feel the expansion and release. Focus simply on the feeling of having your feet on the floor and of breathing. If you find it hard to focus, you can silently or quietly repeat, breathing in the moment. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. Fully inhale positive energy and exhale by letting go of your breath into a state of relaxation. Inhale goodness and exhale into relaxation. Inhale acceptance and exhale any judgment. Inhale clarity and exhale into serenity. Fully inhale desire and achievement and exhale relaxation. Imagine the earth below you as if it's pressing up to support you. Now become aware of the very top of your head and put your focus there, noticing any sensation you are having. Now move down your focus to your eyes and feel how they feel and notice the tiny movements they're making. This awareness relaxes you further. Notice now your nose, the air passing through as you breathe in and out. Noticing your and taking your awareness down your neck. And if you notice any tension, just ask it to release. Notice the sensations in your body, making you very relaxed and comfortable. Become aware of your chest and lungs expanding and contracting your breath. Perhaps you feel your heart beating, pumping with love. Now send your focus down your arms all the way to each fingertip, feeling the sensations of touch in your fingertips. Your focus is on your abdomen and all your vital organs. How your belly feels and how it's digesting 
Notice the sensations of your weight pressing down. This takes you deeper into a state of relaxation. Your awareness goes down each leg, over your knees and down all the way to your feet and to each toe. You have now become aware of every part of your body. Now expand your attention outward again to encompass your whole body and to view what you find with warmth and compassion. You then expand your awareness even further to re-engage the world. The beauty of the breathing space meditation is that it can be performed anywhere, wherever or whenever you feel overwhelmed, the breathing space is waiting. I encourage you to take 10 minutes every day to yourself and practice mindfulness techniques that will allow you to work through the problems you face. Every day, take several full deep breaths, allowing for you to let go of anything that bothers you. And when you show up for work, you not only get the job done, but you accomplish things that move you towards success. If you enjoy that breathing meditation. And now we're going to go deeper into a perineum or perineum breathing meditation. This meditation is powerful, seems to increase your energy, vitality that you feel in your body. Some meditations are designed more to help you relax and relieve stress. And sometimes you want to bring energy to your intentions for the day. So this perineum breathing is an example of an energizing uh, meditation practice. So practice with me, inhale. As you inhale, squeeze and lift and tighten the perineum area as if you're doing a Kegel. And draw the air up to the crown of your head. As you exhale, Imagine that you're blowing air out of the top of your head as if you are a dolphin and recite what you desire. For example, inhale, squeeze tight. Draw the air up to the top of your head. I am joyful. As you shout out the top of your head, you're releasing the air and you're releasing your intention into the environment. It's said that dolphins can communicate with other dolphins from all over when they're in something called a sound channel. And we can communicate with others in a similar way. So it's powerful that we set our intention and become aware of our thoughts and train our thoughts to be positive thoughts. And this is one practice that can help you to train your thoughts and direct your thoughts to the energy that you want to see in the world versus focusing on what you do not desire. Inhale, lift, tighten, draw the air up, and exhale, blowing the air out. 
and back down. We are powerful communicators in our thoughts are just the beginning. So this executive wellness recharge is designed to help you savor life, to not only advance the goals and the mission that you desire, but to help you do it with joy and ease. There are a few steps that I will take you through. Wow, I hope you're enjoying this. Okay, so to manifest your goals for 2023 during this transformative season of summer, where we have so much power to set our intention and cast our desires out into the environment using the connection that we talked about, connection to yourself, connection to your spiritual practice, connection to your loved ones, connection to your community. But it is important to know your, what you want. What is it that you desire? And sometimes it takes time to hear that voice if you silence that voice and you don't know what you desire. So we're gonna come out of the meditation right now and practice a couple of steps to get us to transformation. I encourage you if you're in a place where you can write down, what do you desire? This is one of my favorites. Okay. Have faith that you can achieve your desire. And know why you desire what you desire. If you know why, that will keep you going when things get tough. It'll help you to give up rumination, which we talked about. Rumination is when you worry about the past and you're overcome with fears. Instead, we want to celebrate our past wins and use perceived failure as a ladder to success and learning because joy is the seat of creation and anxiety repels creation. So write down what you desire, write down why you desire it and ask yourself, do you have faith? Do you believe that your goal can be accomplished? Because these are the three things that are required to achieve your goal. You have to know what you want, why you want it, and you have to believe that you can achieve it. Otherwise, you will not achieve it. And this has been very important um, for me in business is to assess what I want and why and attach that desire to something that's bigger than me, but tied to a stronger connection to my mission and my vision. And then to have faith that when things get challenging, I can still succeed. Write down what's holding you back from that deepest desire. Now, if you've had a chance to write down your desires and what you want, 
and write down what's holding you back, I want you to cross out everything that you said that's holding you back. And now all you have on the paper is what you truly desire. There's nothing holding you back. Now write down what are the gaps? The gaps are not the same as what's holding you back. Gaps are things that can be filled with support and connection that we talked about. I help you as your coach create SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goals so that you get to see your manifestation. Include wellness on your calendar, the time for visualization, exercise, mindful eating, grounding, and gratitude, and take time to connect deeply and mindfully on a daily basis. And I know a lot of times we might say, I don't have time for grounding or visualization, um, but all of this can be done in a short 10 minute span. It can be done in a longer time frame as well, but you can build yourself up. You can start somewhere and continue to grow from there and do what feels comfortable to you. And once you see the benefits, you'll understand, for example, visualization. A visualization is something that um, athletes do a lot. And they'll visualize themselves running, scoring the, the touchdown and all the different plays, how their body's gonna move. It's similar to what you can do. It's something called the reticular activating system that you're activating when you practice visualization. I like to practice visualization three times a day, morning, noon, and evening, where you are seeing your goals as if they're already achieved. If you have a speech to do, you're already on stage, you're smiling, things are going well. If it's a new home you want, you're imagining yourself in that new home. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like when all the things are in place? You can do this for larger goals. And then you can do this for smaller goals if you have a meeting coming up. It works uh, very well in training yourself to be receptive to good things that are coming up for you and support you in your manifestation. Visualization has been known to be a powerful tool. There's someone called um, Silva, and I was looking into some of the things that he uh, practices called more of an active meditation. The visualization there's different, there are different ways that you can meditate. You can meditate where you're just relaxing and you're doing your breathing meditation like we did um, earlier. But visualization is where you're focused on something that you perceive as if it's already here in the present moment. And active visualization can also be used to work out problems and challenges in your mind. Like if there's a, something that's really challenging you in the current moment, you can picture that challenge and then visualize a way for that challenge to be resolved. See it as it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's resolved. Um, I'll give an, a brief example. Um, if it's something that you have to clean up uh, if that's causing you stress and you feel you see a heap of papers picture all those papers dissolved or something you know in a way 
Uh, but there's deeper things that you can use this to work on to manifest visually in your mind. Of course, add your physical exercise to your calendar. And interestingly enough, all of these things that I put on the time blocking schedule, we talked about something called an anti-inflammatory life. So we talked about how grounding supports you in reducing inflammation from the body. Exercise can also support you in that. And there's methods of eating foods that are anti-inflammatory. And having gratitude also stops you from having a lot of pain and inflammation in the body. Inflammation, which is, can be brought on by stress, can cause other health challenges. So we want to avoid chronic stress and instead practice things that are gonna support us in removing inflammation from the body and pain and trauma and other illnesses. We talked a little bit about the power of visualization. After this presentation, I want you to, throughout this executive recharge series, practice visualization every day, three times a day if you can. I like to combine it with meditation. So I'll do prayer, I'll do meditation, and then I'll do visualization. I'll combine it together and make sure that during this time, you did take a little bit of time to visualize what came up for you. So affirmations, we did not talk about affirmations yet, but you can repeat this silently. I know you're on mute. Affirmations are powerful. It's sometimes good to create your own affirmations for things that are most pressing for you. But these are general affirmations that I repeat daily and I share with my clients to support them in their transformation. So you can repeat after me, I am joyful, I am healthy, I am whole. Challenges are lessons. I love and accept myself unconditionally. I will search for the good in all situations. I release limiting beliefs that no longer serve me. I am joyful and full of life. I breathe deeply and wholly the essence of life. I plant my feet on solid ground and reconnect to earth. I am abundance and I am worthy of manifesting. We explore mindful communication, deep listening, it's so powerful, especially when you be, get to midlife, <laughs> you realize the importance of being mindful when you listen to people, just taking time to look at them and hear them uh, instead of looking at your cell phone or worrying about what's coming up next because you could miss out on experiencing life by not being present in the moment. And people know when you're not being present, when your compassion is not there, and you know, and you feel it, those days go by and you don't even remember like what happened because you weren't touched or you didn't, you didn't connect deeply. 
speak life into yourself and your loved ones and speak life into your goals. This is what we're gonna practice over the time of this executive wellness recharge, speaking life into yourself, your loved ones, and your goals, breathing life into them. Communicating with compassion. One book that I really enjoyed that my sister shared with me on this was um, The Art of Communication by Thich Nhat Hanh. He talks about when you have family members who may be suffering or experiencing things, how to talk to them compassionately so that it serves you well and serves them well also, like just listening to them and saying that I see you and I acknowledge that you're suffering. I'm sorry that you're suffering. Sometimes that's all people need is to be seen and heard. And then they're able to resolve some of the challenges that they may have. But um, this book, The Art of Communication, gives us some of the tools to do that in a mindful way. Journaling. We practice body scanning a little bit. That's another practice of mindfulness. So when you are doing your meditation, you can become aware and examine each part of your body and know how it feels. If there's any tension, you can ask it to release. Be present. So in conclusion, I want to help you get freedom from stress and renewed wellness. With me as a coach, you will be seen and heard. Grow with love. This is one of my clients. Her name is Billy Poindexter. She is an entrepreneur and she gave me a testimonial about her experience. One of the things I do with my clients, they take um, a DISC assessment test, a leadership leverage test that takes about 20 minutes. And it talks about your personality and your deep-seated interests and goals and your learning style, uh, your communication style. Uh, it's an assessment that's been used for a really long time. It was developed by a psychologist, both a psychologist and uh, a lawyer who <laughs> developed the uh, lie detector test. So it, it's help, the, the test is helpful because it teaches you how to communicate with other people who have different learning styles. And it also teaches you how to water your own uh, dreams and goals. So we do that. And then we do what is called a strategic action plan where we look at your goals in all categories of life, your relationships, your business, your um, health and wellness goals. If you wanna exercise more, you come up with certain goals. And then accountability. So we meet to see um, how you're tracking in your goals. But she had a great experience. And after we uh, consulted for a while, she developed her business and she's doing well. So I hope she comes out to one of our events because she has a food truck. Okay. And to recap, most people are overwhelmed, busy, and exhausted, and don't take time to ponder how to get off the hamster wheel. What will it take for you to transform? And how can a wellness coach help you? Oh, no, Pacific Standard Time. I will be here for the Executive Wellness Recharge. There are different modules designed to support your wellness and transformation. What we covered today was ways in order to stop stress. So some of those ways are meditation, visualization. We went over affirmations. We talked about the importance of communication 
and watering the seeds of compassion in yourself and others and the power of our thoughts. So another book that I um, that we study in coaching is Psycho-Cybernetics. One of the very first uh, coaches that we examine is um, a psychologist who was also a plastic surgeon. He did plastic surgery on people. And after the surgery, a lot of the clients they still saw themselves the same way that they did before the surgery. Some of them could have been, you know, maybe in an accident or something like that. But it goes on to show that our image of ourselves is what defines our ability to succeed. So if you understand a lot of these practices that we do are designed to make us more self-aware so that we understand how we think and feel about ourselves so that we can then work to shape our thoughts and reprogram our subconscious mind. And coaches take you on a journey towards um, improving your self-image and transforming your thoughts so that you can then see a transformation in the life experience that you have. Um, this is um, Maxwell Mott's psych psycho-cybernetics and imagination. I share some of that in my book as well. Your image of yourself is what shapes how, what you'll work towards. So that visualization is a powerful technique that can help you to change your image of yourself and, and change your future trajectory. I'm looking, uh, we talked about neuroplasticity and the reticular activating system. And now it's your time. It's really your time for your breakthrough. During this summer season, it's time for your breakthrough. So I hope that you wrote down whatever your goals were, what you want to manifest, how to get in alignment with your passion, power, and purpose, because that's what these techniques are designed to do. They're not designed just to be done in a vacuum, but they're designed to support you in transforming your lifestyle. So stay in contact with me. Check out my website at www.limapasha.com. Follow me on all social media. I'm Lima Pasha. And I am so inspired because the clients that have signed up for this executive wellness recharge, they are in for a treat. They get a one on one consultation with me, as well as um, the disc assessment, and we'll work through aligning their power, passion, and purpose and supporting their wellness because chronic stress can be reversed and the illnesses that are brought on by chronic stress can be reversed. So we want to support you in your healing and transformation and wellness. And if anyone can come off mute, you're welcome to do so as we conclude this executive wellness recharge. And thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your presence.